to day two of the 15th edition of India Digital Summit, organized and presented by Internet and Mobile Association of India, along with Niti Aayog. Before starting off, I would like to take this opportunity to quickly thank our partners, our diamond partner, Google, our platinum partners, Inmobi and Facebook, our digital growth partner, Microsoft, our omni-channel partner, Zendesk, our customer experience partner, Adobe, our customer engagement partner, Infobip, our gold partners, Freshworks and Tata Terry Services, our silver partners, Reverie Language Technologies and Philose, our bronze partners, Credit Watch and InShots, our design partner, Vice Ape, our media partner, Financial Express, and our PR partner, We Communicate. With that, let us now begin with our next session. Our next session is a panel discussion on the topic in the land of innovation, run up to 100 unicorns. And for the same, I would like to take the opportunity to thank our, to welcome our esteemed guests. First, I would like to welcome our moderator for the session, Mr. Rahul Narbekar, founder, Startup Studio India. We welcome you, sir. Thank you. Then, Mr. Prashant Pitti, co-founder and executive director, Ease My Trip. We welcome you, Mr. Pitti. Thank you so much. Mr. Harsh, Mr. Harsh Vardhan Lunia, co-founder and MD, Lending Card. We welcome you, sir. Hi, thank you guys for being Thank you, thank you for being here. Mr. Rajat Gandhi, founder and CEO, Fairsend.com. We welcome you, Mr. Gandhi. Thank you. Mr. Yuzuke Izumi, Global CTO, Director, Raksal Inc. We welcome you, Yuzuke. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining all. And I can now request Mr. Narvika to continue. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Uh, I think we have a fairly interesting panel today. Uh, so I'm going to play my part. I'm going to be the moderator. I'm only going to moderate and speak very moderately. Uh, let's start off with, uh, I think, each of you just giving a brief bio of what you exactly do. But what I also want you to add at the end, guys, is what is your two sentences or a brief bit of where do you think? Is this uh, is the topic relevant? What are your key thoughts on it? You know? So Prashant, starting with you. Sure. Uh, hi, I'm Prashant. Uh, I, along with my brothers, we run EaseMyTrip.com. Uh, we are India's second largest OTA right now, online travel agency. Uh, we we have been bootstrapped since last 12 years. We never uh, we never raised any money. We have been profitable, and uh, we are anticipating our IPO to come in the next six months. So, you know, I'm I'm running marketing and other affairs in the company. Uh, about the topic, I think it's very relevant. Um, I actually have a couple of personal experiences of how um, this shape is actually coming up and how is it influencing youngsters. So I'm from IIT Madras. Uh, you know, during my times, uh, I graduated in year 2005. Uh, you know, there are there are five or six entrepreneurs from my batch. However, since 2015 onwards, uh, almost around 10 to 20% of graduates from IIT Madras are turning into entrepreneurs. So there's a there's a huge shift uh, for, for, you know, at least from IIT Madras I could perspective, I could say that earlier, you know, we used to aspire to do the MS and get a job in US. Now the times are changing. And I think uh, a lot of unicorns are to be blamed for it. Uh, that's it from my side. Amazing. My memory of IIT Madras is all the deers you guys have on your campus, Prashant. Oh, absolutely. It's like a forest, right? It's, a, you know, Arsh. you have more deer than, yeah, Arsh, <laughs> please continue. Yes. Arsh, over to you. Arsh. Sorry. Okay. Thanks, Rahul. Uh, thank you guys for inviting me on this platform. I run Lending Card. We give uh, money to small uh, businesses. We are a digital lending platform. Uh, we are, uh, we started with Lending Per Se to create the segment. Uh, MSMEs in the country. We currently give Pan India. Uh, essentially, money our ticket size normally ranges from four to five lakhs to small entrepreneurs. Uh, finally, the aspiration is to build uh, the entire infrastructure for digital lending for all the lenders in the country uh, for the MSMEs, and we are working on that. Uh, in terms of uh, topic, uh, I think this is very relevant. I think. Uh, Unicorn is an aspirational thing, right? And a unicorn is a designation title, aspirational theme that every entrepreneur, every businessman wants to do and acquire. But I think underneath uh, uh, all of that, all of us are trying to solve for relevant problems for our society, for our country. As we go ahead and build a, a 
as we grow ahead and do our journey from a developing country to a developed economy and uh, uh, serve our population. I think this is pretty exciting times for all of us to be here, to be part of this journey, to be growing, right? I think all of us saw India's journey yesterday in India-Australia match, right? Test series. So this is our indomitable spirit. This is our uh, uh, learning curve. So I think uh, the journey is going to be exciting and this uh, discussing this unicorns and everything is just part of it. It's a feather in the cap uh, for all of us. It should happen for all of us. That's my few thoughts. Izumi, give us some international perspective. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so just a quick intro about myself. I'm Yusuke, currently working as a CTO for Raxel. Uh, Raxel uh, have been found uh, about 10 years ago uh, by uh, uh, CEO Matsumoto. And uh, we have always envisioned this uh, uh, vision of uh, better systems, better world. There are so many inefficiencies we find in conventional industries and the industries that we're working in is uh, printing uh logistics tv commercials right so what do they have in common they're all giant industries right and we're kind of uh being there as a disruptor of these like uh, classic industries so that's the yeah that, that's our vision um today in this conversation i guess uh you know we ha we happen to be one of the fastest growing company in japan and I am definitely an alien in this panel, uh, in this list of panelists. <laughs> but uh, if there are any uh, contributions I can make, um, you know, what are the uh, you know ingredients that uh, made us grow this uh, this fast? Um, I think uh, that would be my uh, two cents. So looking forward to this. Thank you, so Yusuke. I have a I have a company. I have some experience of Japan. Uh, I have a partner there called Sanjeev Sina, who's been there twenty three years. Uh, and we have office out of the Shin Marunouchi building. And I've had the privilege of meeting entrepreneurs like Teru uh, from Bnex and all of that. And he's a heavy investor in Indian startups. But uh, one of the key debates I keep having, and then this I will jump to Rajat, but just some thoughts on, uh, do you think culture plays a very important role uh, uh, in terms of, uh, as, as a country, the culture, uh, does it play that big uh, role in uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess just to make a brief comment on that, I guess there are two aspects to it. Definitely, there is a um, the heat of you know entrepreneurship in Japan, right? Uh, can be less uh, compared to. I'm hearing you know all these great stories about uh, how India is becoming center of these new things happening. I heard nine thousand startups within the last five years or so. That's crazy, right? So we definitely do not have that momentum, but. Compared to the uh, couple of decades ago when I was, you know, starting as a rookie, uh, the capital investment uh, environment is much different now. So I think uh, the environment is much better, easier, right, for anybody to kind of get on top of it and, uh, you know, start their business. So I think it's beginning to get a lot better. But again, uh, this is a company. This is a country with um, a lot of, uh, like I said, conventional. Uh, businesses are still the majority of the uh, landscape of where the money is going. So, you know, there are certain aspects in terms of uh, like capital investment versus uh, culturally speaking. I think uh, anybody, right, who says, oh, I'm going to start a business. It's still a culture where people say, hey, you're nuts. You could be working for like a foreign investment bank. <laughs> so, yeah, I think there's a subtle, uh, I guess, difference in that uh, uh, I guess I could say temperature or the, you know. <laughs> uh, I like the word you use, temperature. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Izuguri, what is interesting is one of the biggest catalysts for creating unicorns in India is from Japan, right? Masa-san, who is writing Masa, a lot of yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So I'm, I'm going to come back to that. Rajat? Uh, Hi. OK, so I Hi. ran a company called Fairsend.com. Uh, we are uh, a primarily a licensed P2P player, uh, P2P lending company. Uh, what we do is basically aggregate lenders and borrowers. I think we would be the largest non-balance sheet lending platform in the country. Uh, we have originated more than 1,800 crores of loans, uh, pretty much in every sector, right from buy now, pay later to SMEs, micro SMEs. Uh, we are catering to nearly 700 cities across the country. 
Uh, uh, we've given out loans in 700 cities across the country, 12,000 PIN codes. Uh, I think from a point of view of scale, we've really grown in the last two years. I think uh, we were calculating we've grown nearly 50x. Uh, right now, we're doing more than 120 crores a month. Uh, and this is all alternative lending model. Uh, where the supply of capital is not dependent on any uh, any big bank or NBFC, any of those. And we don't, the platform doesn't take any risk. It's a zero balance sheet model, uh, asset like model. And uh, so we, it's been a great journey from an entrepreneurial point of view. Coming to the 100 uh, unicorn thing, I think it's inevitable. It's a matter of time, whether it's one year or two years. In my mind, we should be looking at 200 uh, unicorns. Uh, next two to three years and public market unicorns in my mind. Uh, that's the point which I personally believe that's the real stuff. Okay. Uh, so, pardon me. Yesterday we were talking about it uh, because a public market is a public market. Okay. So, that's the test. Uh, and I think in my mind, in next two to three years, we should be seeing at least 50 public market startups uh, which are unicorn. Uh, right now, I do not know how many are there, and I think that's the that's the fun number. Rather than a hundred uh, unicorn, fifty public market unicorns. Uh, <laughs> and uh, on the entrepreneurial part of it, I think India has been seeing a great entrepreneurial zeal since ninety one when, when we started out. The first wave of all the colleges and the guys went into uh, the new MNCs which had set up into the country, whether it was the Pepsis or the Cokes. And I can relate to that because that time I joined Times of India and there was a huge, they were also opening up from a traditional business to be a new business kind of thing. And we all got an opportunity to be very intrapreneurial, I don't know the word, being in, within a company being entrepreneurs. And uh, so it was an exciting time. I was part of the founding team of two companies which Times of India started. Uh, and then now I'm doing my own uh, gig. I would rather call it a gig. So I think it's it, it has always been there. It's just now we are unlocking that, uh, where people are going and being entrepreneurial themselves, putting their own money, starting up. And rather than being, because the corporates have become too big. Uh, when we joined them, the corporates were very small. Okay, so you could do your own stuff uh, within the corporate. Now they're much more regimented, much more stuff. So I think the the new breed of people who are coming in, uh, they would rather do something of their own and get that uh, flexibility of doing stuff. So I have a lot of hopes from going forward uh, in the next two to three years. In my mind, uh, we are going to see huge number of entrepreneurs coming in, 9,000, 10,000. I think it will be a small number. Uh, we'll be seeing at least 40, 20 to 30,000 uh, uh, startups in the next two to three years. So there's a huge momentum, as uh, somebody else was saying on the panel, is that there's a huge momentum, tailwinds, and um, best of luck to everybody. So yesterday's, uh, when we did a pre call, guys, uh, Rajat sort of stirred the pot by saying, what is a unicorn, right? What is funding? So, uh, so Raja's point was, you know, if a particular fund keeps doing multiple rounds and keeps hiking up the valuation, that's not a real valuation. Okay. So now I'm going to stir the pot further. Uh, so here's a question for you guys. What in your mind is valuation? Is it uh, somebody's opinion? Because Raja is talking publicly, right? That's a funded unicorn. So in, in, in your personal opinion, and I would be great if you can give some examples, uh, because I, I, where I'm coming from, guys, is I, I've been traveling last five years. I'm getting these questions from young entrepreneurs, especially from small town cities. Saying, sir, how is it that a snap deal is valued at $6.5 billion one day and then suddenly goes to you know less than a billion uh, uh, suddenly or a jabong uh, is people talking of getting acquired at a billion dollars and gets acquired for less than 100 million and, and then so many all these stories, right? So, uh, in your mind, the valuation, when you say valuation, do you think it is the fund's opinion? So, Masa San wakes up and says, okay, Uber is valued at so much, or you are valued at so much, or is there, is there a science for the art to this? Prashant, let's go with you first. Well, I think right now, majorly the valuation we are talking about, as Rajat rightly pointed out, is actually coming from private players and 
at many levels they have a lot of role to play on whom to call a billion dollar company and whom not to uh it's a it's a i would say it's an opinion of few people uh which which is making them a unicorn or not and as rajat rightly pointed out basically the the ultimate test will come in public markets where whether are you going to be valued at the same value few people thought you were however more than that i think more important question is that do your customer value you as a unicorn or not are you really providing that value to your customers and adding value to their lives by which they feel that you know you are doing service to them and in a sustainable way and you are able to retain those customers so eventually it's a it's not a sprint it's a marathon and only the times will tell where are you heading towards i think the ultimate answer comes from the customer side rather than from anybody else's side that's a take on valuation and that is why you see fluctuation in 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 the one the names you have taken or or many others right the fluctuations usually only come when there is a disparity between what few people thought versus what customers thought if the customers thoughts and uh, you know the investors thoughts are aligned the unicorn remains uh, you know the unicorn or becomes what's the other word decacorn i believe right decacorn. becomes a decacorn decacorn right so if if the values if the intrinsic values are aligned between what customer thoughts and what investors thoughts you remain unicorn you become decacorn if they are not then you see troubles in the future Hush. I think uh, Prashant has upon a very nice point, uh, Rahul. Two points that I'll, I'll uh, suggest from Prashant's suggestion discussion was that one, it's a journey, right? Uh, a startup is a journey, and uh, it's a long, long duration journey. I think uh, when all of us uh, got into this journey, I remember each fundraise that I've had, right? Every time an investor has kind of directly, indirectly asked me, Hush, how long will you do this? right because the journey not necessarily might be a culmination for them in 3 years 5 years or 7 years right my simple answer to them and i i from the beginning and i didn't realize it but it has been perpetual ki sir ye to karna hi hai matlab ye zindagi to de di hai kind of right so that's where i think the confidence in them has come or they has they have seen me grow and everything so i think uh, uh, it's a journey i think and across our journeys and in in our regular lives if we compare ourselves as well, right we go through our ups and downs where we'll be sometimes very good sometimes we'll be okay uh, again it will be a it will be a test of how customers receive you how you serve them how your people work with you and how you grow what kind of innovations you do and everything uh, what i see is is yeah the pool set that we are comparing here one is is an investor and one is a customer or the external world who also evaluates us right every company success is finally not only based on metrics not only based on uh, the numbers or not only based on pnl it's a lot larger ecosystem that evaluates you there are tons and tons of companies uh, who uh, created wonderful products and they are growing like uh, crazy but not still making money right and there are tons and tons of company who are making tons of money but the markets are small so i think it's not comparable so i think what normally happens is when an investor looks at you right he normally looks at maybe next 3 years 5 years horizon right he maybe also thinks about where the company needs to go how the company needs to build up what size and scale will it be required in some industries there is a chance that you might hit upon a jackpot by being there uh, for the first guy or early more advantages or you it's a winner takes all industry so you you kind of build go are there done that and that, that uh, picks you up secondly uh, in some industries uh, where there are not winner takes all there will be multiple people who will build go ahead and do that but again it's a journey i think finally i also believe that uh, you have to deliver the right product to the customer you have to do the right need uh, satisfaction for the ecosystem and then only your company can survive right uh, i think the largest of the large companies what they have done all across have they've kept, kept their focus on customer right customer what kind of needs uh, everything he wants and then they have uh, continuously kept on uh, building it my personal take on value valuation is that uh, it follows right it follows if you've done a good product if you uh, uh, are building a good company value valuation everything will come i think uh, i as much as i understand and i i am sure prashant rajat or uh, izumi all of them are doing their jobs not just for the sake of uh, material or monetary benefit that it provides it is kind of a satisfaction that of solving a certain problem statement of uh, creating something new 
uh, building for the society and stuff like that, right? If I go and tell my team that I'll pay, we will get this much valued and let's work double the hard, they will say it doesn't matter to us, right? But the problem statement is what excites them. So the perspectives are uh, there, uh, Rahul, I think uh, 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 it's not a clear answer of black and white, what's good, what's wrong, somebody's unicorn, somebody's not, but finally a good prudent business will stay will build, will so serve uh, the need and everything and will get valued as well. So Harsh, uh, what am I hearing from both you and Prashant now, uh, where I'm coming from is I meet a lot of these young kids, okay, who are just yeah, starting yeah. out because I'm yeah. also an investor with two funds. Uh, out of almost 70% of the pitch decks that I get, yeah, the title says building the next unicorn. So yeah. for these kids, unfortunately, it's become that, you know, that's the landmark goal. And yeah. what I have seen in my journey, right from fashion and you uh, till to Indian rules, is yeah. unfortunately, uh, you know, when you're chasing a unicorn, by definition, is a mythical beast, right? Uh, yeah. So in, in my time, when e-commerce was very hot from 2009, 10, 11, yeah. 12, yeah. whatever, we used yeah. to have all these vanity metrics called GMB. And I yeah. know a lot yeah. of companies who were just chasing artificial GMB to get a valuation Correct. and they sort of flamed out you know people did all kinds of uh, actually unethical things in black and white yeah. just yeah. to get a number because investors said screw profits sell below cost whatever but just get that GMB for the valuation what would be a unicorn and yeah. Yeah, because yeah. Uh, media tends to sort of glorify the unicorns yeah uh, I see an unfortunate uh, uh, culture seeping in where the kids are popping out are starting out with this whole object like you said a very interesting thing that i am in this because i'm solving a problem and i'm here to stay yeah but i see kids who will send me a pitch deck with the exit plan first okay if yeah. i start here you give me this much and i will you know this will become unicorn my exit and that yeah. is sort of what worries me so uh i'm going to jump to you rajat uh, after before i come to his do you think this is healthy for india as an economy and as a culture that we are glorifying uh, unicorns and is that you know what is it is it is it a good example for all these young entrepreneurs starting out or what are your thoughts look uh, at some level you need to create some hype for the talent to be attracted okay so if it is still there it's fine okay uh, the only caveat i would put out there is that uh, when you're entering that you should get um, excited about the thing that okay there is five guys from my college have created that or they look these guys are just my age and they're what they're doing right uh, when tendulkar plays he attracts a lot of talent not everybody's gonna become a tendulkar right so uh and he's actually uh what he's done for the indian cricket is amazing right uh similarly out here i think these unicorns put you on the pedestal they put that stuff which attracts a lot of talent it also uh in my mind what it does is that the family which say a young entrepreneur is getting into his wife and everything. At least he can go and tell them, look, somebody is a unicorn. Okay, I want to become that. Okay. So you start getting the social support around there because I remember when we joined the uh, workforce, uh, nobody used to join uh, doing your own thing. I know from my college, uh, when we were joining, you were supposed to join an MNC, right? If you told your friend that I'm starting on your own, he just thought you were a failure. Okay. <laughs> So uh, that that was the thing that is no cream in the Okay, he was he's a failure in placements, right? So that was the first call of the, today. It's opposite. Okay, so I think that level has been done, uh, which is very good for the ecosystem and everything because at least there is some amount of validation for what the young guy wants to do, right? Whether from college or after working for ten years or fifteen years. Because I remember uh, even after ten years. Uh, of working, that validation was not there for me that to start up my own, right? Uh, whether from family or anything or whatever it was, uh, because you were doing a great job, you had a steady salary and uh, and you were growing, right? It's not that I was stagnating or something like that. Uh, I think for me, it was I always wanted to do it. So I'll just share a little bit of it. That the few things to put a perspective on the unicorn part of it. First thing is that why I started was I wanted to give myself a job firstly. Okay. Secondly, for me, it was that I should have a, a big enough problem statement, which I can solve for the next 20 years. Okay. okay. Uh, for me, that was the main problem thing that it should be there. Right. And the third thing was that nobody should fire me. Okay. 
to have. Even during this pandemic crisis, uh, the only joke we have between me and my co-founder is, thank God nobody can fire us. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> whatever the company can go down, whatever it is. Uh, so, we can't be fired, right? Uh, that's one part of the, that's the only story that's out there, whether you take salary cuts and all that. So, the fourth point in, out here is that before you want to become a unicorn, you need to say whether can I live, can be alive. Okay, that's the first part for a startup or a new business. Once you cross that threshold where you say that, yes, I have crossed this level where I think I'm in a stable position in terms of the business. Uh, I'm not saying profitability, maybe break even or whatever it is. You know that you have a you're creating value with your customers. I think then you start dreaming for the unicorn, not when you're writing your first uh, idea statement or a business plan. Uh, that would be a little stupid in my mind to be doing that. Uh, at that time, just say that in next three years, can I be alive? Okay. And then you can take a point. Of course, you can keep dreaming in your mind, but not in your business plan. Uh, business plans have to be a little much more realistic. They can't start the next unicorn statement, right? Uh, so I think that's something which is, of course, pro I'm a little old school in terms of profitability and all that. We chase that. Uh, I don't understand unit economics in the sense where you can justify your business through a unit economics. <laughs> but the only way you can justify your business is either breaking even or with profits. So I think uh, be passionate about these two things. Uh, yes, of course, you'll have to play the game. Uh, with the investors about unit economics. I'm not saying get away out of it. You have to talk their language to get their money, right? Uh, so I think that's what my understanding of this whole clamor for uh, unicorns is. So Izumi, uh, coming to you, uh, I've been visiting Japan since the last 15 years, and I remember a conversation I had once uh, with a bunch of Japanese businessmen. And I think it was Hidei San of Sony who was with me, and I turned to him and asked him, uh, uh, who's the richest uh, entrepreneur in Japan? And they all were very puzzled because they all started talking to each other because I think they never, nobody in Japan at that point had that metric in mind. So, uh, the wealth was never considered. And then I remember a conversation with Tero San at uh, Red Price, and he was talking of, he said, Rahul, you know, Japan, the culture is, is not very startup, startup. Mm -hmm. About 15 years back, and you are you are I think an outlier in that ecosystem. <laughs> How did you a, your journey of you know, culturally with so much pressure to conform and not sort of break out? Right. Uh, how has that journey been for you? And is a unicorn status celebrated in Japan? Right. So just to give a brief history, right? So when we started the business, right? Well, I only joined you know five years ago. So first half, right? First half of the last decade, right? was that we started the business from the most turmoil, uh, vol you know, volatile time, right? That was like 2009, Lehman shock, right? <laughs> so it was probably the toughest time to start a business, really. Uh, what the founder focused, right, was that, you know, of course, uh, I think Prashant just you know, made a comment about this, but uh, uh, you know, I, I think it was very customer centric. Like, what are the problems that we need to solve, right? Now, of course, you know, the journey comes with so many aspects, right? Or so many challenges, right? Different types of challenges. May that be, uh, you know, getting the money, right? Getting the revenue, getting the customers, like all every aspect, getting the product that we're up and running, right? I guess what, you know, kind of differentiated us, and also there are a lot of startups, right? that died long <laughs> in this decade, right? So I guess what kind of uh, kept us going, right, was that I think I can think of like two things immediately. One is um, definitely a team, right? So, you know, we were just talking about the evaluation and there, there you know, it, that that's like what you have to consider for evaluation changes from face to face, right? First, it's like, you know, $1 million and then go on to B, a series B and C and you know what you have to manage right financially is completely different from face to face so you need a badass CFO I'm sorry excuse my language <laughs> <laughs> and of course you need the uh, you know tech uh, tech people right that gets the deliverables done right so that's another aspect of this like rapidly uh, prototyping 
that's the kind of like, you know, things that you have to manage at this point. So I think one of the things that was gifted about Excel was that I think we always had a, a very strong teamwork going on. And that still is like a very DNA that we also ask, like, you know, every part of the organization, like teamwork, right? You cannot get anything done by yourself. But if you have five people, this is the age that you can change the whole game, right? So that's one of the things that I can say about what differentiated us, right? Some people, CEO could not give out his, you know, uh, could not appoint all the responsibility enough, right, to the experts. Right? And the CEO was doing both product management and financing and talking to the customer, right? It's the same thing. So I think the teamwork is, you know, definitely one thing that kind of, that what we were gifted about, right? And second thing is that as qualitative as it may sound, this is very important. I think this is a, uh, yeah, I, I guess this could be relevant to what the Rajan was saying, but the, I think there is certain capacity that you have to ask when you create a vision of the company, right? The thing that keeps us going, because, you know, like everybody said, this is a journey, right? This is a journey that you have to put yourself devoted for next 10 years, right? It's got to be something that can, you know, that can hold you up that long, right? So one of the greatest assets, right, at uh, Raxel is that we have this vision, better system, better world. In Japanese, it's a little bit translated differently, but, you know, it's basically our passion, right, to just change the game of conventional industries. And that's what we, you know, that, that keeps us going, right? So I think this vision, right, kind of creates the boundary as to how much you can ask the company to do, right? We have started with printing, we have started with logistics, going on to like new, new things, right? You know, as abstract as it may sound, I think we have a lot of passion and a lot of influence from this vision. So I think that could be another ingredient as to what kept us going this far, right? We're now like, you know, about to go into 12th year. <laughs> uh, we're still tricky in the you know perspective longer uh, business holders, but uh, I, I think that's, uh, that's another thing that kind of differentiated us from among other, uh, yeah, other startups, if that, <laughs> yeah. So Yuzuki, you, who's your favorite Indian unicorn and why? Uh, in, in Japan or in the world? <laughs> in the world. In, in the world, unicorn. Uh, you give us an Indian example. Well, that we, can, I don't know if you <laughs> we, we actually we actually did have a Indian startup in our portfolio. <laughs> okay, uh, but you know I would keep I will refrain from saying like a, uh, you know the actual um, by name. Well, any example. company you admire, it, it can but, be your portfolio, not your, any, any any Indian company you admire for a specific reason it could be anybody. Right. Well, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, I would just uh, refrain from, you know, just giving like a very specific concrete example, but, you know, perhaps uh, I'll just, uh, I'll just put, put a few names, but I think Uber and Airbnb had given us a lot of influence in terms of sharing economy. Um, mm -hmm. It was used in the sense of B2C, right, or C2C, right, cost, you know, uh, yeah, consumers just like, you know, lend their houses, you know, to another consumer. To another consumer right and this was kind of like a game that was established during that era now we happen to be one of the like, you know first ones to apply that theory in b2b scene right and um it's not about yeah it's not it's not so much about like me liking it but i think we did get a lot of influence from that fact that yeah if we have a platform right that connects the supply chain right these are the printer printing companies and the consumer who need it Right, it used to be the case that consumer had to find a very specific printer to get their job done. Right, but now they can come to Raxel; they will find the best price, you know, out of all the uh, partners that uh, you know we have in our supply chain network. So I think we did get a lot of influence from that, and you know, we happen to be, uh, yeah, one of the first to kind of apply the theory in a B two B context. So. Yeah, not so much about liking or not, but I think we did get a lot of uh, influence uh, from those companies. But you know what's interesting? The first time I heard the term B2B2C was from Mikitani-san. I had a one-hour video chat with him in 
about 11 years back 2009 i think uh, he was looking at i just found it fashion and you and he was looking at the indian and he told me you now rakutan is all about b to b to c and i was like i heard of b to c and b to b but b to b to c and it sort of blew my mind and i still remember the few insights he had on the e-commerce uh, was bang on okay one quick quick fine round with everybody harsh uh, your favorite sunicon some startup you feel is going to be a unicorn soon so just quickly which one and why some startup that can be sunicon quickly rahul it's a tough question let me think about it if i don't you go to okay, others so i'll, I'll go around rajat would you have a name in mind sunicon i I don't know. Actually, Sunicon, not a Sunicon. Sunicon. Very interesting company they are. I uh, I don't know, but I I just can't. I think uh, uh, just nothing comes. I'm putting you guys on a trick. So, Prashant, trick, trick, till trick. Rajat and Harsh are thinking. Yeah, actually, I don't. I actually don't follow companies from that angle. So, from <laughs> okay. that something is a. राहुल इवन आई एम स्टम्प you know it's very it's a very difficult question to to name a few companies who will be sunicon or who will be unicorn soon it, it's a very difficult question my favorite yeah. guys my favorite which is a biggest puzzle for most people is uh, cred by our friend kunal shah he has still not figured out the exact business model kya hai they have also made a joke of it saying if you can figure it out you can join us as chief business officer he <laughs> i think he's already reached yeah. 800 million valuation okay yeah uh, so i think we have a few questions on the chat so i'm going to check it oh. yes, financial services will have a lot more rahul i think financial services is just uh, yes. budding up i think we'll have a lot more uh, unicorns and decacorns in financial services. and uh, to add to that maybe healthcare it's it's one sector probably untapped right now i don't know that many big uh, companies come out of healthcare yet uh, health tech yet yeah. probably yeah. that's that's where i'll be looking out i think prashant we have a question for you on the chat if you can respond to that How do you do type? Okay. Just check your chat, please. Okay. I think since Prashant's there with us, we should wait for Prashant's company. Right? I don't know, Prashant. You you not raise money, so you are either unicorn or you are already gonna be unicorn. <laughs> so uh, no, no, no. We we have a long journey to go. Uh, you know, the, there's nothing near near the unicorn title which is coming for us right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I think okay. I think there's a. We should we'll we'll route for you then, Prashant. Thank you so much. Uh, what's the question? Want me to read it out? Please? Would you like to? Okay, yeah. Uh, I could, I could, I could answer that question. The question is basically, how did we tie up with the offline travel agents to in the starting phase of the company? Right. So to actually give a color of how did we start in year two thousand eight, uh, we started Isma Trip, and at that time we were purely a B two B company, which is we were tying up with the travel agents and fulfilling their travel needs. Now we had a actually very strong, unique uh, value proposition for them. at that time travel agent faced this problem where they had to have multiple logins of multiple airlines and had to put 10000 20000 50000 in various airlines to to get uh, to to make the tickets from from the airline and get commissions so what we did was we created a system by which the travel agent need not work with every airline and put money only in isma trip and since we were the aggregators we were able to give better commissions as well uh e travel agents you know if if airline was giving them 3% we were able to afford to give them 5% because since we were the aggregators we were getting 5 or 6 or 7% from the airlines so we would only keep a percent or two for ourselves and pass on the remaining to the travel agent now the word of mouth spread uh since you know they they required less amount of uh they required less amount of uh, uh money to be uh, money, uh, operating money and also they were getting better commissions uh, you know the word of mouth spread and in in two or three years uh, we start we probably had about 1000 odd travel agents from all across india who were using is matter however in year 2011 we actually you know started our b2c segment which is we act for the first time we actually started is matter.com for our regular customers our entire focus was more on the b2b side at that time so we we just thought that hey why not we allow customers as well to book from is matter 
and get commissions uh, what we were giving to the travel agents also we thought that let's not charge convenience fees which everybody every other portal is charging so we remain very poor, very patient in that journey in year 2011 we began ease my trip and right now i'm happy to tell that 94% of our business is b2c which is direct customers only 6% of our business is uh, travel agent business uh, these days and there are two reasons for that uh, one the companies are uh, you know i would say our focus has also shifted towards b2c uh, so it's slightly more profitable uh, valuable if you could say and also the other reason is that the travel agent business has also come down as everybody is making tickets themselves these days the travel agent business has also come down so for us uh, it is kind of a pivot that we started as a b2b company we are fully fledged b2c company and uh, last year our turnover was 4200 crores uh, and in the top 3 in the top 10 uh, you know travel companies in india uh, i'm happy to say that we are the only ones which have been properly since our inception uh we 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 have always paid some taxes to the government uh, as income tax and we have always remained profitable and probably this year is going to be an exception uh you you know the travel industry has been hit hard so but uh you know it was just that if since uh, the question is that how did we get uh, you know so many travel agents in the beginning the answer is very simple it's just that the value proposition was very strong at that particular time and the value position you know drove people towards us rather than us going to travel agent at that time any hack prashant for other startups they can learn from you something that so i wouldn't call okay so one one good uh, i wouldn't call it as a hack but i would call it as a uh, learning which we also in occurred you know during our journey was that it's it's going to be very very controversial statement for for me to say but the lesser marketing we did the more we grew oh man oh interesting the lesser Can marketing that on a bit prashant because yes the, the, the yeah i mean it's very very unorthodox you know advice which i would be sharing so back in year 2011 when we started our b2c portal you know we just let it be we thought that hey b2b is our focus custom you know b2c is not our focus so let it be so for the first 5 years we didn't do any marketing and customers who came to our portal is my trip they stumbled upon our portal by themselves uh, they became our evangelist they started spreading the word in the market that hey there is a company uh, which does not charge convenience fees and their flight tickets are the same the rates are the same but they just don't charge so tickets the air tickets uh, end up around 5 to 6% cheaper since we were not charging convenience fees now so if basically what i'm trying to say is that if we started doing a lot of marketing uh you know of us not charging convenience fees people may take us lightly but if people are telling other people by a word of mouth people would take that more seriously and now why would you go out in in a party and tell others about is my trip only because we are not advertising so it's kind of an undercurrent because of the undercurrent you know people told others you know when you're talking to 10 different people you want to tell information which is not heard of before right so hence we allowed people to share this information by being uh, under current and by not being openly marketing our ourselves uh, so that you know brilliant, we brilliant and uh, right now in terms of retention 87% of our users stop even comparing us compared to the others this is this is one statistic which we have 87% of the users they just remain and it was because they have understood that what's the point of playing this game of getting discounts earlier and then paying convenience fees afterwards they have understood this game that there is no point getting discount searching for discount book and just just use is matter without paying any convenience fees awesome harsh anything any example you have something similar uh rahul uh, because i always thought that you know most startups would be burning money to scale Yeah. and not caring so much this is this is absolutely brilliant so any any example like this <laughs> yeah yeah i think i think rahul uh, so two things from my side one i also come from a typical uh, marwadi business family right so when i started this business uh, basically my family thought i was getting into a business right i actually didn't <laughs> know entrepreneurship startup as a word right 
So all I have two sets of cousins in my family. One either is educated and working somewhere, like Rajat suggested, and second yeah. is uh, an, uh, a cousin who either we normally all of us get into commerce and get into family businesses, right? So when initial funding rounds came and everything happened, right? My family was surprised because we don't business banana hi nahi hai. Paise kahan se aane thee? Why are you raising money, right? So <laughs> I come from and when when I discuss the business with my family, it's break even point, uh, it's operating leverages and everything. I think one other hack that helped me, Rahul. Again, I came from. Uh, I did CA, right? I did CA and then did MBA. So I don't know, but due to CA background, no, I always have relied on numbers and data, right? I personally tell my team, yeah, मेरे पास वो grandeur वाला vision होता है ना मतलब जो I don't know where do people get it from? Maybe the larger institutions, right? I did my MBA from ISB, but वो जो अलग होते हैं Stanford, Harvard, Wharton वाले जो एकदम grand vision बनाते हैं कि हम दुनिया बदल देंगे, वो नहीं था. तो मेरा हमेशा से व्हेन वी स्टार्टेड वर्किंग विद द टीम हमारे से ऐसा था यार कुछ तो नंबर दे दो डिसीजन के लिए कुछ डेटा दे दो कुछ नंबर दे दो राइट right? मैं सीए हूं मैं डिसीजन नहीं ले सकता हूं ग्रैंड विजन के बेसिस पे राइट सो आई थिंक दैट आल्सो बिकेम अ थीम फॉर आवर कंपनी के भैया उसके पास जाएंगे तो कुछ तो मांगेगा वो डेटा दे दो उसको कस्टमर का नंबर दो या उसको 10 कस्टमर से बात करवा दो अगर ये करना है तो या उसको बोल दे 25 कस्टमर है जिन्होंने ये ले लिया है एंड ऑल दोस थिंग्स एंड एंड लाइक प्रशांत सेड राइट Early two three years we didn't know what marketing was. I had never done that before, right? So my only thought was that if customer को loan अच्छा दोगे तो customer लेगा. Marketing की जरूरत क्या है? So all these things. I think data was one critical hack, and one of the early investors told us whatever you do, just note it down, right? Just note it down whatever you do with the customer. Even if you have a conversation with the customer, note it down. Put it across. Six years later, you will thank me that you had noted down that conversation with the customer at that point. so that we have like i have a habit of writing like diaries i continuously keep on doing this covid i have written three diaries right now suddenly my team suggested sir aap ipad le lo aur us pe bhi likhna shuru karo aap kitni diary bharoge company ki so i think data has been one of the critical success factors behind us data or writing stuff and putting it across to the team we now even know what we did 6 years ago on a particular day kya discussion hua tha team ke andar to wo bhi rehta hai to it gives a lot of confidence here to ye galti to kar chuke hain दोबारा क्यों करनी है आपको ये गलती अच्छा ये गलती तो तीन साल पहले हो चुकी है दोबारा क्यों करनी है सो दैट हेल्प्स यार ऑसम आई थिंक वी आर गोना रन आउट ऑफ टाइम सो क्विकली इजुमी जस्ट वन पीस ऑफ एडवाइस यू वांट टू गिव टू स्टार्टअप्स इन इंडिया जस्ट वन पीस ऑफ एडवाइस वन पीस ऑफ एडवाइस एनीथिंग सो सिंस यू हैव अ ब्रॉड एक्सपीरियंस या एक्चुअली लेट मी लेट मी जस्ट या ओवर देयर कुड बी अ हंड्रेड थिंग्स दैट आई कैन यू नो लिस्ट डाउन बट just one thing that i recently kind of just coming back to the basics right you know the world is changing and how you know just the uh, the way we talked about the evaluation right and it, it you know depending on the phase that you know we think uh differently about the evaluation but tying that you know to it uh i think we have been seeing this kind of interesting uh trend right now in the capital investment market where people are just talking about okay i mean these companies like we work work they're given being uh, devaluated right now because this trend of always following the revenue 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 and investors kind of waiting like okay when are they going to make a profit right recently i was speaking with a very senior uh, uh advisor uh he's a one of the uh, external board member and he was just saying like you know you guys always talk about you know revenue and like operating profit like what happens to the net income and like, everybody was like net income where did that come from like we never we, we never talk about that right it was about reinvestment reinvestment like but you know it's like economy 101 right let's think about like how you think of owning a very small shop by yourself right if you run out of cash you're gone right if you don't have cash in right you're gone right it's we just tend to think that you know playing all these games with you know unicorn valuation like you know how how they value us but it's when we think about this like we need to go back to these basics right <laughs> of what is it like what does business mean to us right it's no different from owning a small shop right and if you can think it that way maybe the old pressure you're getting right <laughs> let's go back to the basics again so this is just like something that i've been i've learned like, brilliant yes yeah, recently and you know so much into that realization i just last thought <laughs> we have a minute i think my question are you asking me yes rajat 
Yeah, and I tend to agree, but uh, there is, I think, running a, uh, in my mind, there are few things one should do about building the business. Be very focused on uh, write down stuff, as Harsh was talking about. I, like I wrote some, when I started my business plan, uh, I wrote some 150 pages, I think. Okay, I mean, 10 point size, long, uh, uh, in a A4 sheet. Um, when you're starting up, please don't use PPT. Only Excel sheet and Word, okay? Uh, because it helps you in detailing. That's what I tell my team and everybody that let's be focused on what we are trying to do. Uh, write it down, uh, keep writing because a lot of thoughts come in in your mind. Uh, you need to be focused on what you want to do when you start writing. I think that's something which is very important. The second thing is uh, in the whole scheme of things, convert your users into your customers. Okay, especially people who are doing uh, internet businesses. Uh, a lot of people ask me, what's the difference? I'll just give you an example. When you're using a road, you are a user of that road. When you pay the toll tax, you become a customer of that. Okay. Now, you can log into my website. So we, yeah, so we started charging our customer from day one. And incidentally, my company was incorporated on 28th March uh, 2013. So three days of billing. And we still have a 1500 rupee billing out there. Okay. So uh, you need to be very focused on charging. Whether you are paying that back, you may be not profitable, but bring in a culture of charging your customer. What it does is it creates a sales cycle. It creates a pressure in the system because a paying customer, we put pressure in the system. I remember when we were used, started advertising on Facebook uh, in my earlier avatar. Facebook didn't have a billing system. Okay. <laughs> Especially from sitting from India. Because they were only free, right? And when we started advertising, we did we, we used not get a bill. Right? It's uh, as small as that. I'm talking about Facebook, well funded company. Well, for six months we didn't get a bill from Facebook. Okay. As small as that, right? It starts putting pressure. And then you can get into your business ideas and whatever your investors want. Because then you can scale. Otherwise, you'll uh, you need to have the basics in drive, right? When the customer is angry, right? He's paid. Who will pick up the phone? It puts that pressure because free users don't put pressure. They'll just move on, right? Uh, they'll go to the next guy. So I think these are a few things one can start imbibing, and rest is your luck and your hard work. Uh, whether you become a unicorn, sonicorn, datacorn, whatever corn you want to become. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Rajat. So, Harsh, like, like both of you, I'm also a writer and a reader. And I lost my big notepad here in the Lansen two days back. And oh. now I'm, I'm going back to something my friend Vivek Bhargav gave me. He has this thing called the Remarkable 2 tablet. Oh, okay. Uh, which I don't do that. Right? I just write on paper and show them. More or more, not told them, they're just lying around there. Person. I write on paper, but I think now I'll have to do that three month wait list or figure out a hack to get that from the US because it's a pain to lose that notepad now, you know. Yeah, so I exactly. think that is one hack you... for us. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, uh, it's been a brilliant session, uh, really, really inspired. And these three hacks that you guys gave us, especially uh, uh, Izumi, what you said about income and versus uh, revenue, is going to stay with me. Thank you. So much. <laughs> thank you, Rahul. Thank you for moderating this. This was very wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you, guys. You. Thank you to all the panelists and thank you to the audience. Uh, we will see you all in another session in a short while. Meanwhile, do visit our virtual exhibition space to check out our partner booth. Stay tuned. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Yeah.